And next, please join me in welcoming Daniel Falbel from our studio. Hello, I'm Daniel, and today I'm going to talk about what's new in TensorFlow for R. And first, a quick recap on what's TensorFlow. And well, TensorFlow is an open source platform for machine learning. It's especially useful for deep learning. So it has fast implementations of most co common operations in deep learning, like convolutions, for example, and it's very efficient for both CPUs, GPUs, and even TPUs, which is the Google hardware for deep learning. It provides automatic differentiation, which is also very useful for deep learning, and it's really production ready. So uh, inside the TensorFlow ecosystem, there are multiple ways to deploy your models to uh, even mobile devices, uh, cloud platforms, and all of this. Uh, well, TensorFlow is, a, is mostly a Python project with a lot of uh, things in the ecosystem. And I'm going to talk about the TensorFlow for R package. And we are spread across multiple R packages. There is the TensorFlow R package, which is, provides mostly the basic access to the TensorFlow model and installation functions and things like this. There is the Keras R package, which wraps the tf.keras model, which is uh, the recommended way to start using TensorFlow. It's like a higher level API to use TensorFlow. And TF datasets, which wraps the TF.data model, uh, which use, use it to load and pre-process that data for deep learning. And we have a lot of other packages in the, the ecosystem, like TF Hub, TF Probability, TFDS, TF Autograph, and AutoCares, which I'm going to talk about. So what's new? There's a lot of packages, and things are moving fast. So uh, we have support for TensorFlow 2.0. So um, before uh, 2.0, you needed to, TensorFlow was uh, worked like you have to define all your graph of computation, and then you executed it. And this is uh, a programming model that is hard to think about, usually. Uh, and with TF2.0, it's much easier because of the eager execution. So before, you needed to write code like this. So you, you write all computation, and then you, you executed it. And now it, it works just like a uh, normal R uh, arrays. Other changes in 2.0 are like API cleanup and things like this. Uh, there is this new package by Thomas Kalinowski, which is called TF Autograph, which allows us to write uh, conditional loops and like if and while and for statements. Uh, just like an, an R if statement, which is much easier, and this is very efficient also, like for TensorFlow. So before you needed to write code like this with like all, all functional conditionals, and now you, you can just write uh, an if statement and it will be converted to TensorFlow code. Uh, in TF datasets, uh, which allows to load and pre-process that data. We have this new feature spec interface, and this is useful for tabular data and for using tabular data in deep learning models. So it, sh it, it works like, uh, it has a similar uh, interface to like recipes, the tidy models package, and so you just define what transformations you want to do on your tabular data, and then you fit this specification, which means it will find all possible vocabulary and 
like scaling all, uh, find the normalizing constants for uh, your numeric variables, for example. And then you can just use these layer dense features uh, in uh, function in Keras. And it, it, this will uh, make all the transformations directly on the TensorFlow gra graph. So it's, it's much easier to deploy this kind, this kind of models. Uh, next, we have some minor changes in TF data sets, like if you ever use a TF data set map, you needed to write a, a function to like per map, and now you can use the per style lambda functions, which like simplifies a bit the, the code. And you can also pass, uh, if you used uh, TF datasets before, you needed to use the make iterator one shot function to create an, an iterator for your, TF, for your TensorFlow dataset. And now you can pass this directly to Keras and it will just work. Uh, another cool new package is the TF Hub package. With a, which allows us to use any, any pre-trained models from the, this website here, tfhub.dev. And in, uh, so uh, people train their models in large data sets and, and provide them the pre-trained models in a useful format. And then you can just use it as a new Keras layer. So, you have an, uh, the URL for a model. In this case, it's uh, the mobile net model. And you, use, you have this layer hub uh, uh, function that just takes the model URL. And then, uh, so it, this model is taking an image and returning a feature vector uh, representing this image. And you can just plug a dense layer, for example, to make a classification use this pre -trained, using these pre-trained pre models. It also includes uh, models for text and video. Uh, TF Hub also provides a recipes integration, the tidy models recipes. So you have, if you are familiar with uh, recipes, you have all these step functions, and there's a new step pre-trained text embedding, and you can just plug a, a, a text, a pre-trained text model, for example, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, for example, here, it's a pre-trained model in the Google News data set, which is, which is a very large data set of news. And it will convert raw text to a feature vector that you can just use in your machine learning model. Uh, and then you can fit a logistic regression, for example, using this feature vector. Um, Okay, in Keras, we have these new text preprocessing layers. Well, uh, if you, it starts in TF 2.0, 2.1, sorry, and it, it changes like the, before the Keras preprocessing functions are all based in SciPy and NumPy. So you needed to, to have a, a, in order to use the functions in Keras, you needed also to have a Python uh, uh, to deploy models that use uh, text uh, preprocessing function in Keras. You needed to have a Python uh, runtime. And now they are built in, in the TensorFlow uh, graph. So you, you can build models uh, using this layer text vectorization and the deployment uh, will be much easier. So, it, it works just like a normal Keras layer. You define what are the, the main parameters, and there's a new step called adapt, which will, for example, find all different words in your text data, or uh, it will do all the, uh, it will find the maximum length of each text and things like this. 
And then you can just plug this layer in the in your Keras model. Like so you, your model will input strings and you just plug like a normal uh, uh, Keras model. Uh, another cool new package uh, by Sigrid is TF probability, which allows, which provides a lot of statistical computation and probabilis probabilistic uh, functions. It's built on top of TensorFlow, so it it provides uh, GPU and CPU and even TPU implementation for most things, which is great and fast. And I want to show you just this uh, layer distribution function that you can plug in your Keras model as an usual as an usual Keras layer. And instead of predicting a single value for each observation, you can, for example, predict an, uh, the, a normal distribution for each observation. So you can calculate uh, standard deviation and, and stuff. So this opens a uh, uh, great scope for deep, for deep learning. You can see more in the, the release blog, blog posts, which is linked here. Uh, there is AutoCares, a package by Juan Cruz, and it, it, it interfaces R to the AutoCares um, package in Python, which does this AutoML, uh, which uses AutoML techniques to build uh, machine learning models. So instead of defining all your Keras layers and how they are connected, you can just use this model image classifier and how many different models you want to try. And it will try to get a, a, a good model for, for your data set. Okay. Uh, there is TFDS, a new package which is very experimental yet, but it, it allows you to load uh, a public data sets in the TensorFlow data sets format, which is, uh, for example, you can load ImageNet using uh, TFDS without touching all the, uh, I don't know, 100 gigabytes of images and how to download them where and how to pre-process and everything. So it's, it's much easier to just test your machine learning model. And it provides this split API that you can say, like, I want to, to split my data in training, validation, and test that directly. So it's a nice package when you are learning new, new things, uh, when you are trying your machine learning, your deep learning model. We are also providing some model packages, which like uh, we took some commonly used uh, deep learning models and packaged package uh, R uh, wrappers for them. For example, the GP2 package by Javier uh, Luraski. And it, it, the GP2 model is, is a, uh, a deep learning model by open AIs, which takes like a, a prompt string and it can like complete this uh, this uh, string with a text that really makes sense and it's pretty incredible. We also implemented some uh, deep learning models using raw Keras uh, uh, layers uh, just for, uh, uh, for it so it's easier to learn and you can see advanced modeling code in Keras. So, there is UNet, which is a image segmentation model, and DenseNet, which is a convolutional neural network ar architecture that was famous like maybe two years ago, and deep learning is very fast. And there are also community con contributed uh, uh, models like the Artbird uh, by Jonathan and John Harmon. Uh, which provides an implementation of the BERT model, uh, which is a 
Google model for text embedding. Uh, we uh, also have the TensorFlow for our blog, which uh, Sigrid writes uh, many, many articles showing the state of the art of TensorFlow and deep learning with very detailed uh, explanations. Thank you. Thank you very much, and we've got a few minutes for questions. Um, so one of the questions on Slido is, classification and regression problems are very accessible via R's interface to TensorFlow. How about survival, pro survival problems, such as time to event outcomes? Such as, sorry. Time to event outcomes, survival. Yeah. Uh, usually, uh, uh, deep learning is very flexible, so you, this time to event uh, models can be just can be modeled by by just changing your loss function. So you can cover this with uh, deep learning with Ke the Keras package. There's a there's a blog post by Sigrid. I probability or the R repartee of probability. Yeah. And that would be uh, Monte Carlo modeling to, to do that. We have a blog post, I think it's called like, oh, how is it called, anyone else? <laughs> sensor data something. Uh, yeah, sensor yeah. data, right? You, you wrote this blog yeah, post. Yeah, and this uses uh, TensorFlow probability, so not deep learning, but also cool stuff. <laughs> yeah. What are our studio's plans to support Torch or PyTorch? <laughs> I don't know. We we have worked. Uh, I have experimented with Torch uh, the like a year ago with the C++ API, but um, I'm not sure if we are going to move forward Torch uh, for now. Well, someone wants to know what are you working on right now. Yeah, uh, TensorFlow is a large ecosystem. Like, we, there's always a lot of stuff that we, we want to work on. Like, there's this uh, dopamine library for, for reinforcement learning, which is something we would like to work. And there's also a lot of work with TF probabilities, too. So, yeah. Okay. All right, one more. Um, is, there, is the plan to track the Python interface to TensorFlow, or will the R extras mean that Python users won't recognize R-based TensorFlow code? Yeah, uh, like Keras, the Keras R package tries to, mim to keep track of all Python changes. For example, these new text preprocessing layers, and there will be image preprocessing layers, and all this kind of stuff. We we will try to always keep track of the of the of the Keras API but we like to add like uh, our uh, the R way of doing things also like the feature spec interface which doesn't exist in the python uh, uh, implementation excellent thank you so let's give another round of applause thank you.